All right, good morning. Out here on another family hike, there's our vehicle, and I will turn this way. There's a sign, but I'll show you this one. Owl's Head Trailhead, and it's at uh, Scraggly Lake, if you can see that. But I um, have to catch up to Catherine and Oliver. But I wanted to do a little talk here about uh, do not voluntarily give up your rights. Um, you have a right, and it's there if you are saved or lost. It doesn't matter. Um, God has given every man and woman, everyone that he's ever created, um, we all have rights from God. And those rights are as follows. Man is a tripartite being. Man has a body, a soul, and a spirit. Um, and that's just a fact. Uh, you can't really say scientific per se, because you can't really see a spirit and a soul, but um, it's what the Bible teaches, and I believe that it is uh, truth. Your spirit, uh, we'll go over that first, as I've talked about in another study. Um, your spirit is your mind. You have free will, freedom of conscience. Uh, you can believe what you want to believe. And nobody should ever take that right away from you. Because it is a God-given right. I mean, think about it. Does God give people freedom of thought? A free will? Yes, he does. Contrary to what the philosopher, phil philosopher, the philosopher John Calvin tried to teach that um, you have a, a unconditional election. Um, you have no possible way to say no to God, in other words. Uh, that's not true. Uh, God does not force people to be saved or to be lost. Uh, anybody that teaches that is quite ignorant of the scriptures and quite ignorant of who God is. Um, so that's the first one. You have a free will because you have a spirit within your body. Secondly, you have the soul. And that soul is basically the seat of your emotions. You can feel things that you can't logically explain. Um, sometimes you're at a place and you just feel something's wrong here. I don't know what's going on, but I just feel like I'm in danger. It's nothing that you can sense with your eyes. It's not, oh, there's a gang over there. They're going to, you know, shoot me dead or something. No, you can't see it, but you can feel something's wrong. That's your soul. And what's that? Well, personal de personal defense. You have a right to defend yourself. Nobody has the right to just come and take away uh, your life or whatever else. They can't just do that. And then finally, your body. Body, soul, spirit. That's what man is made up of. Well, your body, uh, you have a right to bodily integrity. Okay, um, meaning, a little rocky right in here. Um, nobody has a right to come and put things into your body against your will. Uh, without trying to be too graphic here, let me just say it this way. If a man uh, injects fluid into a woman against her will, that's called rape. All right, but uh, if a doctor forcibly injects toxic chemicals into somebody's uh, shoulder, they call it a medical procedure. Uh, I don't think so. Maybe not rape, but uh, certainly goes against the way it should be. Um, so what's my point? You have those three rights there. You have uh, the ability to make up your own mind for yourself. Um, you have the ability to defend yourself and those you love. And you also have the right to say that no one can tell you what to do with your body. You have God-given rights, in other words. And nobody should take those from you. And you should never voluntarily give those up. Um, but the problem is, 
uh, the well, let me say it this way. The reality is those three things, people can try to take those rights from you, but you can fight against them and God will allow you to fight against them. But when you lose your freedom, when you lose your rights, it's because you volunteered to give up those rights, to give up those freedoms. Uh, one of the greatest forms of tyranny or practices of tyranny, I should say, uh, was this uh, last three years. You know, I can't even completely talk about it because YouTube will shadow ban what I say and maybe even threaten to take down the channel, which they have done repeatedly to me because I'm a preacher and I tell the truth. But uh, there's been a lot of loss of freedom and liberty over the last three years. And... Um, just absolutely ridiculous but here's the thing you can maintain your freedom even in the midst of tyranny like that because there's always a way to get out of it there's always a way to say no and you say well we're requiring certain things here at uh, the place where you work you say I can't do that I'm sorry that violates my my uh, bodily integrity that violates my free will. It violates my person, right to personal defense. Sorry, I can't go along with that. Well, you can do that. But a lot of people say, well, my, my rights were violated. Yeah, because you voluntarily gave them up. There's always some way out of it. Um, you might have to lose a job. You might have to move. You might have to lose a friendship. You might have to lose a family member, whatever. It all depends on how much you care about your rights. Um, it's extremely important to maintain those God-given rights. And I don't think any rational person out there, be you whatever your religious beliefs or even just an atheist, I don't think anybody would, with any sense anyhow, would fight me on that issue. Uh, everybody wants to maintain their freedom of conscience, their, their free will. The right to defend themselves and bodily integrity. Uh, you certainly, if you're a radical atheist, you certainly wouldn't want me coming and forcing my religious beliefs on you. You would say, well, that's a violation of my rights. And you would be correct in that. Biblical New Testament Christianity is not uh, spread by the sword, uh, spread by the sword of the Spirit, but it's a spiritual thing, it's a book. It's not a physical sword. You will never see a, a preacher like me um, saying, convert or die. That doesn't happen. Um, so, but I want to make a point here. I have some notes written. Real serious when I'm out doing one of these walk and talks with notes. Um, the fact is, America is being destroyed by design. I think it was Abraham Lincoln that said about, I forget how the whole speech went, I won't quote it verbatim, but something about no one is ever going to, no foreign power can ever come here and, you know, drink of our, the waters in our rivers or, you know, climb our mountains or whatever else here in America. No, if America is going to be destroyed, it will be, be from within. And he was right. He was absolutely right. Whatever you think about Abraham Lincoln, that statement that he made was absolutely correct. The thing that is destroying America is uh, the people that call themselves Americans. And there's a lot of people in this nation that they might have been born here. They might uh, be citizens of this country and a lot that aren't. But... Uh, <laughs> which is insanity. I don't know how you can be in a country illegally and be, you know, it's okay and we'll just grant them amnesty and whatever. It's insane. People come here that hate this country and, oh, that's okay. Uh, no, it's not. But uh, a lot of people in this country that are lawful, legal, born in American type of Americans, but uh, they shouldn't be here. It's high treason. 
which I'll talk about in a minute. Just wanted to show these neat mushrooms down here. Pretty neat. Still learning about mushrooms and types of mushrooms. Uh, mycology, they call that. Um, there's some really neat edible mushrooms out there, which we've tried some of the wild mushrooms. We're learning about those. Uh, definitely a subject to approach um, cautiously. You don't want to just go and eat any mushroom out there. Uh, so, okay. But getting back to what I was saying, there are people here in America that uh, they don't care about your rights, your God-given rights. And they want to take your rights, my rights, from us. Um, and they want to just force it because they know that we will not voluntarily give up our rights. And a uh, very big subject. And it's funny because I recall that there was a war that was fought at one point in time over, and one of the claims was taxation without representation. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think we've kind of come a long way since that. Um, I think you could probably make that argument today again. You know, taxation without representation. Um, the original republic that was formed, not democracy, the uh, you know, Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, you know, um, that's the nation that I'm still a part of. We'll get back to that here in a minute. But the republic that was formed was about law. It was about this is the way things are here. And uh, we're supposed to have a representative form of government. Um, people that we elect, lawfully elect, and we put them into positions of power and basically they represent our feelings and our needs and our desires. Well, um, that's not the case anymore. The politicians in Washington, D.C. are completely, they're not just out of touch with what American people think and feel, they're um, anti-people, uh, against the American people, I'll say it that way. And you have these radical, communists socialists whatever and they could care they couldn't care less about uh about our feelings and what we want and um then you also have the issue of high treason which is uh giving aid and comfort to the enemy again a lot of the people in this nation uh in the government structure they would be very happy to see communist China come in here and take over. They admire China. I remember Justin Trudeau said about how much he admires China. You know, it's just sickening that you have a little, little jerk like Trudeau up there in Canada and we have this, you know, our uh, zombie president here in America, you know, Joe Biden. And, uh, I mean, the guy just can barely put a sentence together. And I mean, they're all speech readers, I get that. But I'm saying with Biden, it's just the guy's barely even cognizant. I mean, it's insane to see this whole thing happening. And just another proof that uh, it's not the president who's in power here in America. America is being run by other people. And I believe... Uh, Roman Catholics are running this country, Jesuits in particular, in an effort to bring this nation down. And, um, and see again, every Roman Catholic out there, I don't care how good of a person they are or seem to be, they all are guilty of treason because their loyalty is to a foreign power, not to America and to the Constitution. Um, and that's a problem. It's not supposed to be that way. But uh, just keep talking here for a little bit as we're hiking. Beautiful morning here 
Um, but on the issue of high treason, when you give aid and comfort to the enemy, uh, again, it isn't right. It isn't some kind of a thing where you can say, well, um, I think that we can respect other people's beliefs as they seek to undermine our government authority that we had here, as they seek to bring down this country. We should respect other people's beliefs. Uh, not if it's going to cause chaos and, and trouble in this nation. I mean, it's crazy. And I'm not talking about, you know, uh, debating back and forth on different issues and saying I disagree and, you know, arguments between Catholics and Protestants and, and Muslims and Buddhists and whatever. Well, those are just, you know, arguments and whatever else. But what I'm talking about is when you have people that are trying to literally tear down the actual structure of the government, structure of the country, that's high treason. And um, we don't have to put up with it, you know? Don't just voluntarily give up this nation. Well, it's just the way things are going, so we have to go along with it. I don't like to see it this way. No, be vocal about it. You know, I've been down on America a lot, but I got to thinking about it, is has America really changed? Or is it the people that have come in here and they're changing it on purpose? Do we still see glimpses of the old America that I grew up in? Yes, you know, is this America here? Is something wrong with this? Has this been uh, updated and messed up and there's a bunch of communists out here or something? No. This is still the same way that it was, you know, hundreds of years ago. Um, I'm not saying it was never logged, I'm sure it was. But what I'm saying is, it's still the same trees growing, the same types of trees. It's still, you know, mushrooms on the ground and there's a trillium there and another one over there. Um, still the same lake over this way, which you'll be seeing that here in a little bit. Uh, the America that I grew up in, there's bits and pieces of it that are still around. And I, for one, uh, don't think it's right to just give up and just lay down and say, okay, well, the, the perverts are taking over and they want to force their ways on us. Well, I don't agree with it, but I guess that's okay. No, because the pervert agenda is a political agenda. And um, it's becoming so obvious now that uh, it's anti-God and anti-Bible. And um, we need to speak against it. And uh, if there's two stores, and one store's got a pervert flag out in front of it, and another store does not, go to the other store. You say, well, but brother, the other store's more expensive. Uh, vote with your dollars. Show people that uh, it's not okay. I'm not okay with this. You know, some kind of a, you go to some store and there's a, some weird uh, man woman or something, man dressed in a woman, dre dressed like a woman, trying to act like a woman. Uh, don't go up to them or whatever, go to another cash register. Uh, thankfully, I talked in a previous video about some dirty pervert. It uh, looked like a woman. It had the upper body of a woman, if you know what I mean. Um, and long hair, but it had a beard. Uh, that's an abomination. That is a satanic, God-rejecting, Bible-hating reprobate. And I don't, I'm not like the new IFB that taught that reprobate, reprobates can't get saved, but that they've somehow crossed the line and the blood of Jesus Christ can't cleanse them from their sins. I don't teach that, but I will, will say that uh, it's nearly impossible for somebody that's going through, you know, gender reassignment surgery or whatever they call the satanic stuff that it is. It's almost impossible for somebody like that to truly become born again, especially if they're going through chemical treatment, hormone stuff and whatever else. You're, you're crossing the line when you get into that. You really are. 
uh, it's not right. And again, it's an attack on my beliefs. And um, see, in order for me to be okay with something like that, I would have to voluntarily give up my rights. And that's not happening. Um, and you know, America is heading towards civil war right now. Oh, uh, you can see that. Any rational person can. And, um, spiderweb. <laughs> Just got in my eyes. Uh, you know, it's my wife and my son are in front of me, but they're not as tall as I am, so they miss some of the spiderwebs. They go across the trail. But, <laughs> never hurt you. It's good for you. Actually, the truth is, spider webs, just a little side note here, um, can actually help if you have a cut and you get some spider webbing and put it on your cut, it can actually stop the bleeding. Weird, but the, it works. I've seen it happen. Myself, my wife, my son, we've tried it. I heard about it one time, I thought, what kind of weird stuff is that? But it's true, it works. Um, let me show you here real quick. Just walk down here to Scraggly Lake. I'll slowly turn around here so you can see out as the sunlight's hitting me in the face. So there you go. Beautiful lake. But uh, to continue here on our hike this morning, make sure you're moving your legs underneath your desk so you can get exercise. Joking, of course, but um, there's no reason why we have to give up our rights. And uh, again, it's going to, the civil war that's happening already, and uh, that's going to eventually go hot. Um, that war is one that uh, God will protect you if you trust in him. Because again, God will not go against your rights that he gives you. Satan wants you to give up those rights, but you have to do it voluntarily. The devil is not permitted to take away your God-given rights. Um, he can't. He can't do it uh, unless you voluntarily give them up. If you allow your mind to be swayed by propaganda um, and you no longer are thinking for yourself, You've given up your rights. If you say, well, I don't think it's right to have firearms or to physically fight people that are trying to kill me, then you've given up your right of personal defense. Um, and if you say, well, the government says I'm required to uh, take something in my shoulder or take a pill or do whatever, um, then you've given up your bodily integrity. You've voluntarily given yourself over to the devil. Simple as that. You say, well, my child went off to school and they were taught about uh, all the perversion stuff. Well, you voluntarily sent them to that school. And don't even give me the thing of, well, we have no choice. We have to publicly school our child. That's nonsense. Um, it's like saying, you know, you go to a gas station and you can see that there's a robbery going on inside and you say, well, we need gas. Nothing else we can do. You know, we have to go in there and try to pay for the gas while the place is being shot up by a criminal in there. But what can you do? <laughs> go to another gas station. You say, well, we'll run out of gas. Okay, then walk. There's always a way to get a around the devil's system of trying to take your rights from you. Don't go along with it. I get so sick and tired of hearing Christians, well, brother, I was forced to do this. I was forced to do that. And it goes against their God-given rights. I think you weren't forced. You were told to give up your rights, but you made the decision to go along with it. And uh, the Bible says that the just shall live by faith. And if you're not living by faith, then uh, that's a problem. Uh, and again, you're going to give up your freedom and your rights 
because you're living by sight. Well, I could go to jail. I could lose my job. I could, I won't be able to pay my debts or whatever else. Um, Christians in the first century didn't worry about that stuff. Yeah, well, that was back then, but we can't do that anymore. Where does the Bible teach that? It's such a weird thing, you know? Uh, I know Ruckman, in his commentary, he says about, you know, no Christian can follow the New Testament completely. We can't do it the way that they did it in the first century. They were a lot more strict with their discipline, church discipline and everything. We can't do it that way anymore. Um, where does the Bible say that? Where does the Bible say, hey, when the end times comes, build your church buildings just like the Catholics and the pagans have and, uh, and have everybody in there. Um, don't have too high a standards because you'll lose members. Um, overlook sin. If there's sin in the congregation, just kind of overlook it until it gets to a really bad level. And then maybe, you know, just ask the guy politely to leave. Where does the New Testament say that? It doesn't. So, yeah. Um, but on the issue of the Civil War, because I think it's coming pretty quickly, where violence is going to start to happen. Again, one of the, one of the problems with good people, good conservative people is, we want to be left alone. We want to come out and we want to hike. Um, I am not, I did not come out here today to fight with people and to take up a defensive position and, and, um, you know, uh, you know, fight and kill people or something like that. I didn't come out here for that. I came out here for a nice peaceful hike before going to the office today. And, um, that's what's in my mind. But I have to understand that there are people out there, uh, thankfully not many in this area, but there are people that literally hate who I am and think it's their duty to destroy me. Either I'm supposed to conform to their system of anti-Americanism, you know, and um, because I'm a toxic white man, okay, a little racism there, but... And, you know, there's black men that are toxic as well. If you believe in the Bible and uh, being married to one woman and raising your children, your sons to act like men, well, then you're a toxic masculinity as well. Um, but, you know, they're really focusing in on the whites. I'm supposed to be ashamed of my race or something like this because of slavery or whatever. Even though none of my ancestors had slaves, they were all in the north. And uh, Anabaptists, so... Um, and they say... All the black slaves built America. Well, that's not true. My ancestors uh, didn't have black slaves and they worked very hard. They were farmers. So, primarily, uh, when they came here in 1720, my ancestors, I'm saying. So, uh, but this, this whole thing, I mean, we were literally at the store um, the other day and uh, these Filthy harlots walked by, you know, barely wearing any clothing, tight shirts and little skimpy shorts, you know, uh, some chicky and her mother. And my wife, you know, is walking in front of me, going around the aisle. Her and Oliver were out in front. I was pushing the cart. Came around the corner, and this uh, chicky little girl looked to be about maybe 13, 14 years old. And she, she looks at my wife and she, you know, Looks up and down with this horrified look and she and she goes oh, oh, like this as she walked past me and i just kind of looked at her kind of you know, what's your problem and um we went down went up the aisle and down another and saw them again uh near the meat aisle or whatever toxic place for sure there you know near the where the meat's sold and she's i heard the mother saying uh, this teenager or whatever she's looking and she's going uh, tried to say something kind of pointing over at my wife and her mother said we're not even going to talk about it she said you know exactly what those people are and she said we're not even going to talk all right sorry about that just looked and said that uh, the video exceeded its length and it had to be stopped <laughs> so I'm not sure where it cut off but just to get back to the story I was telling 
uh, about this mother and her daughter. And they had this attitude, you know, that uh, you know, because my wife is wearing a long dress, you know, how dare she? She's supposed to be showing her body off and whatever to everybody. No, she's not. She believes in modest apparel. And, um, and oh boy, I, uh, if any of these insane feminazis ever decide to confront my wife, oh boy, uh, that's going to be an interesting time. <laughs> my wife is a ret veteran of two branches of the military, uh, was a special police officer in Washington, D.C. Um, a bunch of little feminist chickies going to tell off my wife. Uh, that would be bad for them. Very bad day for them. <laughs> It'd be funny actually to watch. Probably wish I had my camera. But, um, you know, see, the, again, just it doesn't matter. I didn't go over to them and say, hey, bunch of filthy, trashy whores, put some clothes on or something. And I've known street preachers that have, that have done that to filthy whores like those two women. Um, but I don't do that. I don't care. Women want to walk around looking like whores, well, that's up to them. Between them and their god, Satan. Uh, I don't care. Do what you want. Here, another look out here of the lake. Nice lake behind me. Um, so, you know, whatever. But the... Uh, my point is that civil war that's there right now it's already you can already see it and these people because they're losing their free will they're being propagandized by the left and they're starting to think that it's their duty to destroy people like me and that I should be stopped and I'm hurting this country and they should go and tear down monuments to civil war heroes and Revolutionary War heroes, and we should just rewrite the whole history. No, uh, you can do that in your warped little world, but you're not taking away my country like that. I am not voluntarily going to give up my rights. Um, it's not happening. They say, well, then we'll force it. Uh, then it's going to go bad for you because I am on the Lord's side. The Lord is on my side. And I stand for truth and righteousness and justice and judgment. And uh, just as a little encouragement out there to anybody who loves freedom, especially to save brethren, but anybody that loves freedom, um, don't give it up. Don't just say, well, it's the way it is. They passed a law or something. I don't care what laws they pass. Um, this government does not represent me anymore. Uh, there might be a few people that say some good things, but most of the politicians are corporate whores, is all that they are. You know that. I don't care how conservative they are, they'll turn on a dime. Um, I heard a guy recently say that David Martin, which I have major issues with that guy, but he says some good stuff about the scamdemic. And, um, but I heard him say recently, he said about Rand Paul could have brought up some really strong evidence against Fauci uh, there before Congress. And he said he didn't, why? And he said, because he's trying to fund his next political campaign. Well said. I don't care uh, what beliefs that David Martin has or whatever else, he spoke the truth on that one. These uh, politicians there, everything that they do, it's all about funding their, their next political campaign. Um, there's very few of them anymore that would be willing to die for their country. Um, but you see, I'm willing to die for mine. And uh, I'm not going to voluntarily give up this nation and give up my beliefs. And we will have America as uh, in our own home as the old America that was there when I grew up. And I will go to the stores that best represent that old America. Um, maybe not be perfect, but the ones that are there to respect my rights. And if I ever go to a store and I get confronted by a bunch of liberal left feminazis or perverts or whatever else, and I tell them, you know, that they're on their way to hell, 
and the store says you're not allowed to shop here anymore because you're narrow-minded, bigoted, whatever. Okay, then I'll leave that store. Again, that's New Testament practice. You go to a city, and if that city receives you, then fine. If they don't, then you shake off the dust of your feet as a testimony against them, and you move on to the next city. So it's not some kind of a thing of we have to be accepted by the lost world or something like this. No, we don't. So, but just a little rant video here. I don't think I'm going to make it the whole way on this trail here. Uh, I'll probably have to do my next video. But, um, just can't stress it enough that you don't give up your rights voluntarily. If uh, some military comes through and whatever and they uh, force, you know, forcibly take your rights from you, well, at that point in time, you still fight. And uh, Paul, even as a prisoner, he was still free. And um, he wrote about that. So yes, you can have your physical rights violated and still maintain your uh, free will, your freedom of conscious, conscience. You can still maintain your personal defense to a certain extent. Um, but don't ever give voluntarily give up your rights. That's, I guess, the, the message of this video here. And uh, it isn't some kind of a thing of, as a Christian, we're called to get along with people. We're at war with the uh, wicked world out there. We truly are. Um, and we can live together peaceably. The Bible talks about if it's possible, live peaceably with all men. Um, certainly, do that if you can. But... Uh, if it's not possible, if they're passing all kinds of wicked rules and things, then you stand up and you say, I'm not going along with that. I'm sorry, I can't do that. That violates my conscience. I will not go along. I will not submit to you. And uh, watch what God can do. Um, there are countless stories of Christians that were there communist Russia, communist China, and they would stand against the communists. Just read a story the other day. Uh, somebody sent me a hymn book, which I'll be doing a review of when I'm done reviewing it, going through it and things, but I'll do a video review. And uh, there was a story about the hymn Face to Face with Christ my Savior. And um, the, this missionary couple was in China when the communists took over. And the communist soldiers came and they took these, this missionary couple and they took them to the spot where they were going to execute them, death by firing squad. And this Christian couple started to sing, face to face with Christ my Savior, face to face what will it be when with rapture I behold him. Jesus Christ who died for me. Having a hard time singing when I'm hiking, but uh, they started singing. And those com communist Chinese, those atheists, they had their guns up and they dropped their guns and they said, go home, leave, you're free to go. They didn't follow their orders. And uh, there are many stories like that down through the years where Christians put their faith in God and they said, uh, stop preaching that. You stop teaching that, the wicked people I'm saying. And the Christians said, no, we're going to do what's right. We will not voluntarily give up our rights and our freedom. That's not going to happen. And uh, they won. They won the victory over the wicked. And brethren, we can win the victory over the wicked as well. And just do your part. I know a lot of you are shy, you're quiet, you're kind of backward and whatever. You're not real outgoing. I'm not especially outgoing. But uh, these people, these wicked people, uh, you do not give up to them. 
do not let them take your rights from you. I'm sorry, you're not allowed to carry that Bible in here. No. Uh, years ago, uh, there was a time when I went to, my wife and I went to get our, her parents, you know, my in-laws, um, at the airport. And I carried my normal preaching Bible and we went in, we had to wait for a while. So I thought, we'll just go in and study the scriptures. And, and uh, we went in and there was a McDonald's there at the airport and didn't order anything. <laughs> No, thank you. No, not really interested in McPharma there. But, uh, um, and I remember we walked in, sat down at this table, and my wife and I were going through the scriptures, just reading some verses together. You know, not bothering anybody. And this big, tall, black woman behind the counter, I see she looks over, and she kind of, she's watching us, you know, and she sneaks over behind the thing. I see her getting on the phone. And uh, I saw, see her, she's talking in the phone and she's peeking out around the corner at, at us, you know. <gasps> it's a Bible, uh, you know. And a white man with a beard. <gasps> and uh, and a couple minutes later, this, you know, shaved head white goon comes walking over. And he's, and he's you know, just, you know, jutting his chest out. He comes walking over and he puts his hands behind his back, you know, the... What do they call that? Uh, standing at attention or something almost, I guess, in the military. And he's there and he's got, you know, he's standing there. And he's, you know, standing about 10 feet away from us and he's looking over, you know. Just wanted to start something with me, you know. And I just, yeah, whatever. Kept reading the Bible. And um, waited and we heard the thing of flight such and such is now arriving gate number such and such and uh so we closed the bible got up and walked over to where the gate was and i glanced behind me and goonie boys following me you know i mean he knew he just he could understand i was going to take that that uh, airplane down with my king james bible i guess or something i don't know what the idiot was thinking you know it's dangerous it's a fundamentalist oh no <laughs> You know, but he, uh, he was, he thought he had one and uh, he was going to be famous or something, get a promotion or something, I guess. Whoa. This is the pretty steep area here. Um, so, but we, you know, saw our parents coming and we said hi to them and everything else and walked out of the airport, got in the vehicle and left. But uh, I guess I should have put my Bible away, you know, so as not to offend the goon. No, uh, I don't think so. Be offended. I'm offended that you are offended at me. So, uh, trying to kind of keep the video going here because I want you to see the owl's head lookout here when we get to it. Um, so sorry for my ranting, but, uh, huh. well, I'm going to be doing another video here, so I guess I'll stop for now and get the other video going. One last look at the lake out there, and so I will quit for this video, and, uh, you can tune into the next one, and... See you then. Thank you for watching.